Other than my IDE or text editor, Git is probably the tool that I use the most in my day-to-day -day development work. So it makes sense to spend a bit of time optimizing your workflow with it. And as we all know, saving a few keystrokes is really important because then your coworkers will hear a little less clicking from your 10 keyless Cherry Max Blue custom caps and key rollover mechanical keyboard. To be honest, I don't really think any of these tips will save you a significant amount of development time, but they're more here to reduce friction. From my experience, if something is tedious to do, I tend to do it less often, even if it's useful or saves time in the long run. Also, reducing friction just makes my life as a developer a little more enjoyable. And if you enjoy what you're doing and you don't get slowed down all the time, you'll also write better code. All right, so I mainly use Git from the command line, although I do use the GUI from time to time. The GUI is great for looking at the branching structure, or especially at diffs. I often use it to take a look at all the changes that I made before I commit. This helps me not accidentally committing any leftover debug print statements or comments. My rule of thumb for GUI versus command line is only use the GUI for reading the repository, but not writing to it. So generally I commit, pull, push, check out and merge branches only from the command line. The main reason for this is that I have more precise control over what I want to do. Especially if there's a problem, I know exactly the command that caused the issue and any error messages that Git might have given me. I've experienced it many times that people run into issues with Git and they can't figure out what the problem was. Because the GUI doesn't tell you exactly what command it used. So I highly recommend using Git from the command line, especially for destructive operations. The command that I use the most in Git for sure is git status. If you use the dash s flag, you'll get a much shorter version of that. And this is actually the default that I use and have mapped to git st. I only use the long version if I need more detailed info and have mapped it to git star. To set up these two aliases yourself, paste these commands into your terminal. You can find them in the video description to copy as well. Since we're probably going to edit a few more aliases, let's actually open up our global git config which is just a text file where Git stores these aliases. By default, Git will open this in Vim. Vim is a terminal-based text editor. If you're not familiar with it, type colon Q exclamation mark to exit, and now you're officially a badass programmer because you finally get all the memes for how to exit Vim. I highly recommend that you change the text editor that Git opens to something you're comfortable with. Personally, I use VS Code, and you can use this command to change it to that. If you use a different editor, just Google it. For most editors, this is pretty easy to find. After you've changed this, Git will also use this editor for other actions, like entering long commit or merge messages. All right, now that we've set the editor, we can use git config global edit to open the config file. And here we can add new aliases. Being able to easily open the global config is useful in itself. So let's start with adding an alias for that. Personally, I've mapped it to git conf and git cge. That's right, you can add multiple aliases for the same command. Let's continue with the usual suspects. I use git ci for commit and co for checkout. You can still combine these aliases with other options like dash a and dash m. And did you know that you can actually combine these to dash am? This trick works with most command line tools. Sometimes I start working on a feature and I edit multiple files, but then I realize that the approach I took isn't going anywhere. Then I want to throw away all the changes that I've made since the last commit, which you can do with git checkout dot. And since I'm a bad coder, I need this so often that I've made it into an alias, which I've mapped to git cod. Be really careful with this command, since it will discard all the changes that you haven't committed yet, and there's no way to get them back. So if you're not quite sure if you might need those changes again in the future, you can also put them in a temporary storage using git stash and retrieve them later using git stash pop. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a full video on how to use git stash. One small issue with git checkout dot is that it won't delete any changes that have already been added to the staging area with git add. So for example, here I've added the example.meta file and if I run git checkout dot, it will not restore it to its original version. But sometimes I really do want to get rid of everything that hasn't been committed yet. So in this case, I first do git reset head. This will unstage all changes and leave them in the working copy. This doesn't actually modify any files. It just unmarks these changes, letting git know that they're no longer staged to be committed. Then I can do git checkout dot as we did previously and remove these changes entirely. I've mapped git reset head to git rh. 
If you didn't know, head is just the name for the commit you've currently checked out. And git reset head will reset everything until just before that, so basically everything in the staging area. Sometimes I want to do the exact opposite. I want to add absolutely everything to staging, even untracked files and folders. For this I use git add a. This is useful after you've made a bunch of changes and added lots of files right before you want to commit everything. One more useful command for removing stuff is git clean. With the df flag, this will delete all untracked files and folders in the repository. Again, be super careful with this, since it will permanently delete all files and subdirectories in this folder that you haven't yet added to git, and there's no chance of recovering them. The next really useful command that I like to use a shortcut for is git pull rebase. I actually have a full video on this on my channel, but the short version is that I always prefer this over the regular git pull. Because by default, git pull will create an extra useless merge commit, whereas git pull rebase creates a nicer, more linear commit history. If you do use this and you get a merge conflict while pulling, you can always undo things by doing a git rebase abort. All right, here are two more pretty standard commands. Git branch lists all branches and the full version, which even lets you see remote branches. Another useful command is git commit amend. This will let you add changes to your latest commit and even edit the commit history. I often use it together with two extra options, dash a to automatically add all current changes and no edit. That last flag is useful because by default, the amend flag will open my editor to let me change the commit message, which can be useful, but sometimes I just quickly want to add all my current changes to my latest commit. For example, when I notice a leftover debug print statement or a small bug fix that doesn't justify its own commit. This actually allows a pretty nice workflow where I work a little bit on some code, commit it, then work some more on it and amend my changes to the commit. I do this until I'm happy with it, do a final amend where I write the commit message and then I push it. Be careful though, unless you know what you're doing, never amend the commit that you have already pushed. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a full video on how to amend commits. All right, here's the full list with all shortcuts from this video. You can also find this in the description below to copy. What's the git alias you use the most? Let us know in the comments. This has been Philomatics. I'm still super new to YouTube, so please let me know if you'd like to see more content like this or consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.